So we've already looked at ifs, but in this video we're going to have a look at nested ifs. So in programming terms, nesting means having one structure inside another, and most commonly that's either nested ifs, as we're having a look at here, or nested uh, loops, which we're going to have a look at in a separate video. So I've started to create a program, and it's a rock, paper, scissors game where you play against the computer. So I've got the options in a tuple, rock, paper, and scissors, and the computer picks a random number from 0 to 2, where 0 is going to be rock, 1 will be paper, and 2 will be scissors. And the computer goes before the user, although you can't really tell, um, that uh, removes any uh, criticism that the computer might be cheating. And then we ask the user for their choice, so they input a number, 0, 1 or 2, in this for the same uh, reasons, and it tells us which um, choice we've made. So if we just run that, it says... Uh, what choice do you want? So I'm going to pick rock, and uh, I chose rock, and the computer also chose rock. So what we need to do now is we need to decide uh, who wins under those circumstances. So we're going to use if, and we're going to uh, check um, the uh, for pairs of things that have been chosen to see who's won. Um, so we're going to pick one person's perspective, doesn't really matter. So I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to just pick the user. So there are three diff uh, three possible situations. So first the one is I've chosen rock, represented by zero. Um, then I might have chosen paper, represented by one. And I might have chosen... Um, scissors represented by two. Now I could use uh, elif and else, but because they're mutually exclusive and the choice is going to be naught, one, or two, um, I haven't validated it, but I could do, um, then I'd, I think this would be fine. It doesn't really matter either way. So there are three options that I've chosen, and for each of those, we need to see what the computer has chosen. So if I've chosen rock, for example, we could compare that with what the computer's chosen, which again could be rock, paper, or scissors. Now, there's three possible outcomes um, for each, um, or three possible choices for each of my choice that the computer would make. So I could, in here, check. So if I've picked rock, we want to see what the computer has chosen. And if I've picked paper, we want to see what the computer's chosen. And if I pick scissors, we want to see what the computer's chosen. So that's three checks for each of my choices. Um, however, we can reduce that. So if we think about how we're actually going to record who's won, if we have a variable called something like outcome that we're going to use to record um, the result and then print that at the end, if we assume that uh, it's a draw, that reduces the number of checks we actually need to make. So now we only need to check for wins and losses. So we've cut down by a third the number of ifs we actually need to do to check the computer's um, score. So if I've chosen rock, represented by zero, uh, we'll, we, we don't need to check um, whether the computer's chosen zero because we've already assumed that unless we say otherwise, it is a draw. So what we need to do is we need to check if the computer has chosen one and we need to check if the computer has chosen two and if the computer has chosen one so if the computer has chosen paper and we've chosen rock then the computer wins doesn't it and if the, uh, I choose rock and the computer chooses scissors, then I win. So we can copy and paste that really. Just tweak the numbers. So second option, if the user chooses one, which is paper, what would what would lead to a win? So scissors beats paper, doesn't it? So if the computer chooses two, then the computer wins. And we're not going to compare. We're not going to look for one because we've already assumed it's going to be a draw. So um, the other option is zero. 
So if the computer chooses rock, then paper beats rock, and I win. And then again, so um, we've got two now. So again, uh, two is scissors. So what beats scissors? Rock beats scissors. So if the computer chooses zero, then it wins. And if it, uh, um, if it chooses one, which is paper, then um, I put scissors cut paper, so the computer wins. And then the only thing we need to do at the end is print the outcome. So that's quite straightforward. We could do with a few more checks to make sure that I've chosen a valid number, etc. Uh, but that's the basic outline of the game. So this is what we mean by a nested if. So we've got one if. So if I choose rock, then we do these checks. And if I choose paper, then we do these checks. And if I choose um, scissors, then we do these checks. And because these checks are only done when that check is done, so these ifs are only done if that if is done, and these ones are only done if inside that if, then we call that nesting. So one if is inside another one. What the, these ifs only occur, or that check is only made, if user is zero. And these checks are only done if user is one. So that's what we mean by nesting. It's where you have one if structure inside another one. So now, hopefully, if I uh, run this, it should work. So I'm going to pick a number, and obviously the nature of it being random, we're, not, we're going to struggle to find out all the possible combinations, but let's give it a go. So I'm going to pick rock. The computer chose rock, so it's a draw. So here we can see that um, my design choice to only check for wins and loses, losses um, has worked anyway, because we've drawn. I've made the assumption that it's a draw unless we determine otherwise, um, so that's fine. So I'm going to pick rock again. The computer chose paper, paper covers rock, so the computer wins. So that's also right, isn't it? It's going to be a little bit difficult to test when it's when there's randomness involved because um, it's going to be difficult to assume or assure, be, be sure that you've covered all the options. You can't um, choose to cover them all, you just have to wait for them to come up. So I chose rock, the computer chose scissors, so rock, blunt, scissors, um, so I won. So let's just try some other ones. Let's just try paper. So paper, uh, the computer beat me because scissors cuts paper. And scissors, so the computer won again. And again. This time, the computer chose rock, so I won. And the computer won again. See if we can, get it, see if we can force a draw on that one. So there we've got a draw, and so then I'm going to choose scissors now. So I've drawn with scissors. I've won with scissors. So, in fact, I'm just looking for a loss with scissors, and we've covered all the possibilities. Oops. Proving to be elusive, that uh, loss. Obviously, scissors is the way to go. A lot of drawing going on there, aren't there? So, the computer wins. So, there we go. So there we go, nested ifs and uh, a quick way to knock up a rock, paper, scissors game.